Good morning and welcome to the last live session for part two. Very exciting. That means we're almost halfway. And that means we are almost closer to the end than we are to the beginning. So everything is going to happen or feel much faster. And things are just going to get better and better. All right. So we did some general base arithmetic. And I believe we did in exercise 7.9, A and B. So we'll continue with C and then we'll do multiplication and that will be that we didn't have we, we couldn't fit everything in in one session two will be a little bit too much so we'll have time at the end if there are any questions so we are looking at c it's three zero 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 base nine minus two, three, 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 base nine. So I am going to line it up, giving myself enough space to show the borrowing and the method happening. Line everything up nicely. And then I am ready. So now I start with the ones column. Zero take away three, it's not gonna work. I need to go borrow, there's nothing to borrow. I need to go borrow from the next column, there's nothing to borrow there. So I need to keep looking until I can borrow something. There's a three, I will borrow it, I'll borrow one, changing that to a two. How much have I borrowed? I have borrowed nine things. How you want to represent those things is up to you. Technically it's one zero base nine, but I find that uh, confuses people, so I just make nine marks. Doesn't matter. Color might help, but I've committed to the black here. Then I'll borrow that one guy. He comes over and he makes he splits into nine other things, uh, whatever you want to call those nine things. I'll use a different little symbol because they are different. That gets me to my column right next to the one I'm actually in. So I borrow one of those, they're gone, and it splits into nine things. The method allows me to not really be too concerned about what those things are. I just need to know how many. So now I can say 9 minus 3 is 6, and I have a symbol, a single digit symbol for 6. Then I move on to the next column. I now have 8 here. Take away 3 is 5. All the work was done. Then I move on to the next column. 8 take away 3 is 5. 2 take away 2 is nothing. And so the answer is 5, 5, 6, base 9. It can't be more difficult than that. That is the worst case I can think of different base so I have to keep that in mind a lot of borrowing which is really where the heart of the of the subtraction method nothing else can then surprise me if I can understand this one all right then the only thing that is left is multiplication so let's see, uh, that should be exercise 710, and it is. And again, for the multiplication, we're not going to make the second number 
too big. So I have 5, 5, 6, base 7, and I am multiplying it by 2. I'll write the 7 everywhere. But really the 2 is kind of universal, right, because it's a single digit. But anyway, so my method says line it up. Give yourself some space if you want. And then we are ready to go. Now I'm again going to use the long version of the multiplication. Instead of doing some things in my head, I am going to write out everything. So 2 times 6 is 12. 12 is one group of 7 and 5 left over. If you still have a tendency to say 15, then you need to correct that because it is not 15. It is 1, 5, base 7. Then I move on to the next column, pad it with a 0 to keep everything in line, and I can then say 2 times 5 is 10, but there's no symbol for 10. 10 is one group of 7 and 3 left over. Then I move on to the next column. So I'm going to start in that column, so put my zeros down. Then I can say 2 times 5 is 10. That's one group of 7 and 3 left over. And I'm ready to add. Not much carrying, I expect. In fact, none. Therefore, the answer is 1, 4, 4, 5, base 7. Nothing here should be strange, by now at least. And I just need to keep in mind what group size I am counting in. In this case, it is a 7. We keep that second number nice and small, so you can do all of the arithmetic in your head, making it even faster. And like always, feel free to interrupt if you have any questions. Uh, then we move on to the next one, only two left. 8, 8, 6, 1, base 9, times 3, base 9. We're going to go as high as 9. Yes, you can technically use any base. Uh, 11, 12, and so on, but then we run out of familiar digits and we have to make new symbols for the uh, 10, which is now a single symbol, 11, single symbol, and that uh, uh, creates a little bit of confusion for people. Uh, we don't need to do that. So, 8, 8, 6, 1, base 9, times 3. All right, so I go 3 times 1 is 3. Easy. Oops. <clears throat> now I'm going to my column with that 6 in. So I'm going to start in the second column, pad it with a 9 to keep everything in line, and let the method isolate this as if it's a 6, but it's really 6 groups of 9. And I can relax that and say 3 times 6 is 18. That is two groups of nine with nothing left. Then I move on to the third column. So I put my zeros in so that I can say three times eight and not three times eight groups of nine squared. Three times eight is 24. 24 is two groups of nine and six left over. Then I move on to my next column, the last column, which is where my answer is going to start. So I put some zeros in. 3 times 8 again, 24. 24 is 2 groups of 9 and 6 left over. And then I add, see if there's anything that carries over there. 
is not. So the addition is kind of boring. Squeeze in my answer here. 28803 base 9. Well, that's a lot. Hmm. Now, there we go. It's the method that's important. The technicalities of the number system, eh, it's really an afterthought. I do have to keep that in mind, but it doesn't change the method. It's the method. So you have to uh, present it in a way that shows you understand the method. It's not just about the answer. The answer is important, but if you just write the final answer, uh, then you get half the marks because you've shown half the goal that we have. One goal is to find the answer for yourself. Another goal is to be able to explain it. And that happens when I write things out. Now, there is an oral test where you will have the opportunity to verbally explain things, but the written test is unfortunately not that time, so you have to present it in a way that convinces everyone that you understand the method. 1401 base 8. I shouldn't have mentioned the oral test, should I? Oh, no. But that's a November problem. And it's not November yet. You have nine days of blissful ignorance before you have to worry about things like that. First Halloween, then worry. We're going to multiply by four here. And we're working base eight. So four times one is four. Oh, these numbers are pretty small. So this is going to be super easy. Next column. So I'm getting ready for that column. 4 times 0. Oh, that, that was a letdown. Next column. So I'm getting ready for that column. 4 times 4 is 16. Oh, that's kind of exciting. Two groups of 8. Nothing left over. Last column. Beep, beep, beep. I do my padding first, just being consistent. Then I do the multiplication, but it's just a 4. Then add them up. That line is not straight. Unacceptable. Four, zero, zero, six, one. Where does one come from? This is supposed to be a plus. <laughs> it's not a one. Ah, so easy to make a mistake. Six, zero, zero, four. Six zero zero four base eight. Let me zoom out. Touch. There we go. That looks better. And that is it. The end. Please remember to click the like button if you enjoyed the video, and to subscribe if you want to be notified of more videos. Thank you.